Once upon a time, there lived a queen who went out driving one winter's day just after a heavy snowstorm. After a while, she was taken with such nosebleed that she had to get out of her sleigh. As she was standing by a hedge looking down at the red blood and the white snow, she said to herself, If only I had a daughter who was as red as blood and as white as snow, I wouldn't care for my boys. The words were scarcely out of her mouth when a witch appeared and said to her, You shall have a daughter as white as snow and as red as blood, and your son shall belong to me, but you may keep them till the baby is christened. And so it came to pass that the queen had a daughter. The child was white as snow and as red as blood, just as the witch had promised, and so they called her Snow White and Rose Red. There were great rejoicings in the palace, and as for the queen, she went quite wild with joy until she suddenly remembered what she had promised the witch. Thereupon she had the silversmith make twelve silver spoons, one for each prince, and one more besides which she gave to Snow White and Rose Red. As soon as the princess was christened, the twelve princes were turned into twelve wild ducks, which flew away and were seen no more. They were clean gone, and they never came back. The princess grew up to be a tall and beautiful maiden, but she was often so strange and sad that no one could understand what was the matter with her. At last, one evening when the queen was also sorrowful, for of course she had many strange thoughts when she remembered her boys, she said to Snow White and Rose Red, Why are you sad, my child? Tell me if anything is the matter with you. If there is anything you want, I'll give it to you. Oh, I think it's so lonely here, said Snow White and Rose Red. Everyone else has brothers and sisters, but I have none. I am all alone. That's why I'm so sad. You have had brothers too, my child, said the queen. I have had twelve sons who were your brothers, but I gave them all up for you. And then she told the whole story. There was no more peace for the princess when she had heard this, for all the queen wept and wailed she could not hold the princess. She was determined to go off and find her brothers, for all the fault were hers, she said. In the end the princess had her way and left the palace. Off she went into the great wide world so far that you never would have believed it possible for such a delicate girl. One day when she had been walking a long while in a great dense forest, she grew so tired that she sat down on a little mound of grass and fell asleep. She dreamt that she went on deeper into the forest until she came to a little log cabin, and there she found her brothers. Just then she awoke, and right in front of her she saw a well-worn path through the green moss, leading deeper into the wood. She jumped up and followed it, and after a long walk she came to just such a little log cabin as she had seen in her dream. There was no one at home when she went in, but there were twelve beds and twelve chairs and twelve spoons and twelve of everything. When she saw this, she was beside herself with joy, for she knew this must be where her brothers lived, and that the beds and the chairs and the spoons belonged to them. And now she laid the fire and swept, made up the beds, cooked the food, and tidied up everything as best she knew how. As soon as the meal was ready and she had laid the table for them, she had her own dinner, but her spoon she forgot, and it was left on the table. Then she crept in under the youngest brother's bed and lay down. No sooner was she there than she heard a whirring and flapping in the air, and all the twelve wild ducks came flying in. But the moment they crossed the threshold... They turned into princes. Oh, how nice and warm it is in here, they said. God bless whoever laid the fire and cooked us such a good dinner. And each took up his silver spoon and sat down to eat. But when they saw there was still a spoon left on the table, they looked at each other in wonder. It's our sister's spoon, they said, and if her spoon is here, she can't be far away. If that's our sister's spoon and she is here, said the eldest prince, she ought to be killed for she's the cause of all our sufferings. She heard it all from under the bed. No, said the youngest, it would be a sin to kill her, for she's not to blame for all our sufferings. If it's anyone's fault, it's our mother's. So they began searching for her high and low, and finally they looked under all the beds. When they came to the youngest prince's bed, there they found her and dragged her out. 
The eldest prince still wanted to kill her, but she cried and begged pitifully for her life, saying, Oh, please don't kill me. I've wandered about hunting for you for years, and I'd gladly give my life if I could only save you. Well, if you'll save us, then you may live, for you could do it easily if you only wanted to. Oh, if you'll just tell me how, said the princess, I'll do it, whatever it may be. You must gather thistle down, said the princess, and then you must card and spin and weave it, and when you've done that, you must cut out and make from the cloth twelve caps, twelve shirts, and twelve handkerchiefs, one for each of us. But while you're doing it, you must not laugh, nor speak, nor cry. If you can do all that, then we're saved. "'But where shall I find enough thistle down for so many caps and shirts and handkerchiefs?' asked Snow White and Rose Red. "'That we can easily show you,' said the princes, and they took her out to a great meadow filled with thistle down, waving in the wind and shimmering in the sun and looking like sparkling snow as far as you could see. Never had the princess seen so much thistle down before, and she set to work at once to pick and pile it up as fast as she could, and in the evening, when she got home, she carded and spun the thistle down into yarn. She kept this up for a good long while, picking and spinning and in between times cooking for them and making their beds. Every evening they came flapping and flying home as wild ducks. At night they were princes, but when morning came, away they flew and were wild ducks all day. Now it chanced one day, when she was out picking thistle down, and if I'm not mistaken, it was the last time she needed any, that the young king who ruled the country was out hunting and caught sight of her as, she, as he was riding across the meadow. He stopped, wondering who the lovely maiden could be who was wandering about, picking thistle down. He asked her name and wondered all the more when she did not answer him. All the same, he liked her so much that he wanted to take her back to the palace and marry her. So he told his servants to lift her up on his horse. Snow White and Rose Red wrung her hands in despair, and made signs and pointed at the bags full of all her work. When the king finally understood that she wanted to take them along, he told his servants to pack them, too, on the horse. This done, the princess gradually quieted down, for the king was both kind and handsome, and smiled at her sweetly. When they reached the palace, and the king's old stepmother saw how beautiful Snow White and Rose Red was, she was so angry and jealous that she said to the king, Don't you know that the girl you've brought home and want to marry is a witch? Why, she can't speak nor laugh nor cry. The king paid no attention to the old stepmother, but married Snow White and Rose Red, and they lived in great happiness and grandeur. But for all that, she, was, she never forgot to work on the shirts. Before the year was over, the young queen had a little prince, and this made the old queen even more angry and jealous. So, in the night, she stole into Snow White and Rose Red's bedroom while she was asleep, took the child, and threw it into the snake pit. Then she came back and cut the young queen's finger and smeared the blood on her mouth and went to the king. Now, she said, come and see what kind of a woman you have taken for your queen. She's eaten her own child. The king was so heartbroken that he almost burst into tears, and said, I suppose it must be true from what I see with my own eyes, but I am sure she'll never do it again, and I shall forgive her this time. The young queen had another son within the year, but everything happened just as it had with the first one. The king's stepmother was even angrier and more jealous than before, and again stole into the queen's bedroom at night while she was asleep, took the child, and threw it into the snake pit, then cut the queen's finger, smeared the blood on her mouth, and went and told the king that the queen had eaten up this child too. This made the king more miserable than you can possibly imagine, and he said, From what I can see with my own eyes, I suppose it must be true, but I'll forgive her this time too, for I'm sure she won't do it again. Before the next year was over, Snow White and Rose Red had a daughter, and the old queen stole her too and threw her into the snake pit. As before, she cut the queen's finger and smeared blood on her mouth while she was asleep, and then went to the king and said, Now come and see if I don't speak the truth when I say she's a witch, for now she has eaten up her third child also. There was no measure to the king's grief, for now he could no longer spare her but was obliged to give orders that she should be burned alive. 
When the pyre was lighted, and they were about to throw her upon it, she made signs to the people to take twelve boards and place them around the fire, and she laid her brother's handkerchiefs and shirts and caps on them. They were all finished, except for the left sleeve of the youngest brother's shirt. No sooner was this done than there was a whizzing and whirring in the air, and twelve wild ducks came flying from the forest. Each one took his clothes in his bill and flew away. Now you see, said the wicked old queen to the king, that she really is a witch. Hurry and throw her on while the wood is still burning. Oh, said the king, we have plenty of wood. There's a whole forest of it. Wait a minute, I must see the end of all this. Just at this minute, the twelve princes came riding up, as tall, handsome fellows as you ever set eyes on, but the youngest had a duck's wing in place of his left arm. What are you doing? asked the princes. My queen is to be burned because she's a witch and has eaten her own children, answered the king. She hasn't eaten her children, said the princes. Speak up, sister. You have saved us. Now save yourself. Then Snow White and Rose Red broke her silence and told them of all that had happened and how every time a child was born, the old queen, the king's stepmother, had stolen into her bedroom at night and taken away her child and then cut her finger and smeared blood on her mouth. But then the princes took the king to the snake pit. There were the three children playing with the snakes and toads, and you have never laid your eyes on prettier children. The king took them with him and went to his stepmother and asked her what punishment she thought should be given to anyone who had the heart to betray an innocent queen and three such blessed children. As such a one should be tied to twelve wild horses and torn to pieces, said the old queen. You have pronounced your own doom, said the king, and now you'll have to suffer it. So the old queen was tied to twelve wild horses, who tore her to pieces. But Snow White and Rose Red took the king and her children and the twelve princes home to her parents, and told them all that had happened. There were great rejoicings over the whole kingdom, for not only had the princess returned safe and sound, but she also had saved her twelve brothers.